Hello everyone, I'm Supreet and in this video I'm going to discuss the lesson titled The Interview. It is in the syllabus of grade 12 and the name of the book is Flamingo. So let's get started. So I'll discuss uh, this lesson, the interview in the form, uh, you know, I'll be giving the gist of the lesson. And as you all know that this lesson is divided into two parts, part one and part two. Part one talks about, you know, interview and how people take it different opinions of people are and celebrities how you know some of the celebrities like it while others don't so that is what you know is being discussed in the part one of the lesson the interview in the next part of the lesson it is you know one of the interviews with amber to eco and that interview is being talked about in the next part of it so let's start with the part one so in the part one, in, uh, it is being, you know, talk, whatever is being talked about, uh, you know, all those important things are there in the gist only. So you can revise this from here. Interview has become an important and irreplaceable part of journalism. However, the opinions about interview differ from person to person. We all are aware that interview is a major part of journalism. You know, different people have different opinions about interview. Some dislike it and while others like it. Some are of the opinion that interview is a source of truth and in its practice an art. However, others despise, others despise, despise means hate it for it intrudes into their personal lives. Obviously, there are certain times when interviews intrude into the personal life of the person being interviewed. So interview is a good source of truth, good source of information. It's, it's quite enlightening and it's a very good part of a very major part of, you know, uh, journalism. But in case it intrudes into anybody's personal life, then it's not good. So some of the person which they have uh, who have like different different perspectives about interview are being talked about like V.S. Naipaul. He feels that some people are wounded by interviews and lose a part of themselves. And it's quite true. There are at times at times interviewers. They ask such questions that the other person who is being interviewed, they get wounded. So V.S. Naipaul, he feels that some people are wounded by interviews and lose a part of themselves. Lewis Carroll never, uh, again, you know, we are talking about celebrities and well-known persons only. Lewis Carroll, he never consented, he never agreed to be interviewed. Whereas if you talk about Rudyard Kipling, he considered it immoral. He considered it a crime and an assault that merits punishment. Whereas if you talk about H.G. E. Wells, he referred interviewing to be an ordeal, something to be, something which is like very, 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 you know, horrifying and difficult. Despite the drawbacks, interviews are supremely serviceable medium of communication. Interviews are the most vivid impression of our contemporaries and the interviewer holds a position of extreme power and influence, obviously. Nowadays, if we talk about, you know, different, different uh, things like politics, say politics, Bollywood, Hollywood and all that, when they are being interviewed, you know, lots of information comes to the public and it, interviews are quite enlightening. So, you know, despite its drawback that certain times, you know, those interviewers, they ask such questions which directly you know are a peek into the personal life or personal affairs of somebody which which should not be that which should not be done but still you know interviews are a source of information and you know in case you know uh, and at the same time they are the medium of communication and a vivid impression of our contemporaries and you know interviewers they hold a prominent position and they have like power also because they provide public with the information which they seek for which they seek now, the next part of this lesson, the interview, it talks about an interview with Amber to Eco. And first of all, let's uh, know who Amber to Eco is. Amber to Eco, he was born on 5th January 1932. And, uh, you know, he demised on 19 February 2016. He was an Italian novelist, literary critique, philosopher, symbolician, and a university professor. He's widely known for his novel, The Name of the Rose, The Name of the Rose, which is very, very, uh, you know, highly uh, applauded. And, uh, you know, it, it had a huge success until date also this novel is, you know, read by many people. Uh, because of its content, because of, you know, the narrative style of Amber to Eco, because of engaging and narrative and, you know, uh, hu humorous content uh, that particular novel has. And also it, you know, has metaphysical content. So now in the interview that happened with Amber to Eco, he was being interviewed by Mukhan Padmaban. And in his interview, Amber to Eco, he shares his ideas about empty spaces. This is something very important in this particular, you know, uh, lesson that empty spaces, 
this Ambitu Eko says that he uses all those empty spaces that is you know transition times and he writes a lot he says that in our life also there are empty spaces just like those empty spaces exist in an atom so you know this is a kind of metaphysical example only he says that he makes use of those empty spaces to work moving further Eco wrote narrative and scholarly essays. Ambato Eco's writing style was highly lauded then and even today also. And Eco, Ambato Eco liked to, to be called a professor who writes novels and essays, not anything else. And the interviewee asked Eco to explain the reason behind the huge success of his novel, The Name of the Rose, which is still very much, you know, highly lauded a novel. Amitu Eko said that the novel delves deeper into metaphysics, theology and medieval history and it was published at the right time. Amitu Eko, he, uh, you know, emphasizes that it was the best time of publication that, you know, this novel, particular novel, The Name of the Rose received huge success. Had it been published 10 years later or 10 years earlier, the novel wouldn't have received this much of, you know, applause and, you know, uh, applause from the society. And this is an observation only if we read, if we read his writings, if we read his writings, we can, uh, you know, uh, judge that, you know, his writings are being lauded because of playful and narrative style he has got. Obviously, you know, many a times, you know, those uh, pieces of writing, the, you know, academic writings, academic writings are, you know, more or less sometimes, you know, those are kind of boring and dry, you know, for the person, for some person, some some persons who are not so much interested in the academic part. Whereas, you know, in case we talk about the writings and novels of Amber to Eco, those are narrative and playful in style and those engage us. So this is what the gist of this particular story is and thanks keep watching keep learning in uh, to find notes on this particular chapter you can uh, go to my blog supreet the old blog spot keep watching keep learning thank you